guest today is Kayla Cinnamon. Kayla, how are you? Good, how are you? I am doing great. I am in Chicago. Where are you? I'm out in Redmond, in Washington. Redmond. I've been there many times. And what's nice. your job at Redmond? I'm a program manager for Microsoft. Which product? I own Windows Terminal, so the new command line experience. Windows Terminal. I confess that I know very little about Windows <laughs> Terminal. I think, uh, like a lot of people, I've been a Windows and a C Sharp person for a long time. And mm -hmm. I think my perception is that Windows Terminal is more relevant to Linux folks. Is, is that true? Um, I would say it's relevant to anyone who uses the command line and that it's okay. just extra beneficial for those who are coming from either Linux or Mac because they're used to a tab terminal because you can get those by default. So this, our terminal gives you tabs and you also run panes so you can run any command line application inside of it. So you can do your like Windows subsystem for Linux distros inside Windows Terminal so you can have the best of both worlds. And then it's fully customizable so you can add like acrylic background images or acrylic backgrounds and background images um, and any different colors or fonts, all of it's supported in Terminal. Interesting. So if I use the Windows Terminal, that means I don't need to use the old command prompt anymore. Is that It includes all that functionality? So it does come with command prompt and Windows PowerShell already as profiles inside of it. So you don't need to run um, CMD per se from the start menu. If you launch Terminal, you'll get CMD in there. So CMD is still the same on the back end, but the front end, the UI looks different with Windows Terminal. Okay, and that's the same thing is true of the PowerShell um, IDE that I can just, I don't need to have three different command lines. I can just use Windows Terminal, correct? Right, but the shell underneath is your PowerShell or command prompt. So it's just the UI on top that's new with Windows Terminal. Got it. There, are, there still are three different command lines uh, tools, but uh, they're, they're abstracted away from me. I can just launch one thing and right. get access to all three of those. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Oh, that is very cool. Um, I'm gonna after this call. I'm gonna start doing that. <laughs> and I'll let you know how it works. Okay, perfect. Uh, what now this this is a relatively new tool, right? It's not. Um, it's just what a year or so old. Yeah. So at Build 2019, so a year ago, we announced that it was a thing, and we also open sourced it there at the event. So the code was on GitHub, and the only way you could get it at that time was to build it from source. So we were just in mm -hmm. preview. From then, and then a build this year, build 2020, we announced that it became 1.0 and it was out of preview. It's a full stable product. So it was about a year of development to get from just code on GitHub all the way up until like it's a shipping product and it's in the store and you can get it and it's stable and it's out of preview. So Okay, so, so build uh, 2020, which was all virtual mm -hmm. uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, yep. from this recording. Today we're recording on June 24th. I won't release yes. this for uh, a couple weeks after this, but um, that's uh, that's when it was announced it would be 1.0, or that's when it actually went 1.0? That's when it went 1.0. So we okay. hit launch right before the keynote so that it was available. Excellent. Oh, that's how I heard about it, because I saw you on one of the keynotes. Yeah, yeah, it was and, really fun. And I thought, well, that looks really interesting. I want to talk to Kayla more about this. <laughs> uh, does anything change when it goes from 0 0.999 to, to 1.0? Is there is there something significantly different? Um, we've just fixed a lot of bugs. Uh, we've done a lot of bug fixing. We actually went from, we went to 0 0.11, so we went all the way up to like 0 0.11. Um, and we've just been fixing bugs for the last like three months just to make sure it's really stable and there are no crashes because that's the goal. Um, yeah, absolutely. So yeah, so now we've just been working on new features because we also launched a preview build of Terminal that's also in the Microsoft Store alongside the stable build. So you can get both Windows Terminal and Windows Terminal Preview at the same time. And then all of our new stuff goes into Preview first. And then a month later, after it's been tested and uh, all the bugs have been ironed out, then it moves into stable, all that new stuff. But then when we move into stable, there's newer stuff going into Preview. So there's a constant cycle that we have. Oh, this company is so much more agile than it used to be. <laughs> It used to take three years. That process you just described, it used to take three years, sometimes longer. Oh, yeah. For, and a month feels products. long. Yeah, a month feels, feels long, long for us. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, let, no, I, we already talked about it. It, uh, it has the functionality of CMD, the, the old command prompt. It's just been around since the DOS days. Mm -hmm. And it has the functionality of PowerShell. What else does it have? So it can run any command line application. So you can run WSL, so any like Ubuntu, Debian, OpenSUSE, any of those. You could also have SSH in there. 
Um, anything that runs in the command line, you can have as a profile. So it's pretty uh, flexible. You said that word profile a couple of times. What do you yeah. Mean? So we call each shell or executable a profile because you can add a bunch of stuff to it, like different uh, color schemes or font faces or background images or acrylic or the whole nine yards. And it's per uh, window that opens. So in the drop down menu is your list of profiles, and you can name them whatever. You, typically, it's like Command Prompt, PowerShell, Ubuntu, Azure Cloud Shell, SSH Connection, like whatever you have as your executables are usually what you would name them. And then when you open them, it has all of your settings for that profile. So it's the background image, the colors, whatever. Um, so that's why we call them profiles, because it's not just the executable, it's like a ton of different stuff. So you can kind of tailor it to your environment, how you want your customizations to look. Hmm. Are, are there profiles that are built into it or do I need to add them as a user? So the command prompt, command prompt and PowerShell and Azure Cloud Shell come by default. And then if you have a WSL distro or a different version of PowerShell, like PowerShell Core or new PowerShell 7, it will automatically detect that you have them and create those profiles for you as well. Hmm. So if you ever, if you're using something outside of any of those, then you'll likely have to add them by hand. Like if you want your SSH connection, we can't detect that for you because we have no idea where that is. So you would put that in by hand. So it just depends on what it is. But for most use cases, we should dynamically create a profile for you if you're using like WSL or PowerShell. Tell me a little bit about what's on the roadmap, what's be coming up in 1.1 and 1.2 if you're thinking about that. So 1.2, or sorry, 1.1 launched last week um now oh, like as of recording fast. i know <laughs> um so that one we added the context menu item if you're in file explorer and you want to open a uh, windows terminal from a folder you can right click and click open a windows terminal that was a huge hmm. request and it's it looks yeah. so small but it required some finagling so that came in 1.1 and we also added a bunch of other settings we had um tab color picker so you can right click on a tab and then change the color and then you could also right click on a tab and rename it right there on the spot and those will the colors and the renaming of that if you rename it that way you can also rename your tabs and your profiles with a different setting um, that will persist for your terminal session so that's kind of fun if you want to color your tab strip and stuff now we want to start adding like oh your tab color is a setting and we're going to end up doing like in the next like Future releases will have theming, so you can specify the tab bar or the tab tabs itself or the background mm -hmm. colors. That we have to define what a theme is and then create themes around that. So that's a new thing that we're going to be working on. And we're also working on a settings UI. So that's hopefully landing by the end of this year. That's the goal. In 2020, we'll have a settings UI. Um, well, how are settings done now? So right now they're in a JSON file. So if you click on the settings button, it will launch your default JSON text editor, which is set in your windows. Like how do I want to open JSON files in that application? That's what it will open. So if you don't like opening notepad and you want it to open a VS code, you set that in windows and then it'll just open the JSON file and you can edit your settings in there, but it's pure JSON. Like it's just a text file. So we want to add, a UI, it's a little more user friendly, and you can actually see all the options that are available to you. Because right now we just have a JSON schema, which will, if you're in VS Code, it'll automatically recommend um, properties that you don't have or settings you don't have yet in your whatever object you're in, so your global object or your profiles or your color schemes, and that will kind of help guide you on like what other settings we have. And then we also have the doc site, but a UI will definitely just help a ton of people including myself, of like changing um, your settings and stuff. Oh, definitely, yeah. Uh, especially my, uh, me, who is new to this thing. I <laughs> mentioned the color, and I, if that also seems like a really small thing. But color is a big deal, I think, if I have two or three of these windows open. And mm -hmm. I'm going to really just quickly know which one is PowerShell, which one is SSH, and, yep. uh, and so on. That's, uh, that's, uh, that can be a really big productivity boost. For yeah. Which is a small, for such a uh, seemingly trivial thing. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Uh, is a, uh, how do I get this? Is this something that's uh, built into Windows or do I need to download and install it? Or what's the process? So, so we recommend that you get it from the Microsoft Store. Uh, you okay. will need to be on Windows 10, 1903 or or newer or higher. I know uh, 2004 just came out a few weeks ago. Um, 
it will work on there too. But uh, 1903 and higher, and we recommend from the Microsoft Store because you'll automatically get the updates that we push. But if you don't have access to the Microsoft Store, we also publish our releases on GitHub. So you can download the package from there and get it. But if you want the updates, you'll have to go get them manually because GitHub doesn't have an auto update right. thing. So that's how we distribute, I suppose. Hmm. Do, you, do you have the uh, GitHub URL? Yeah. Andy? Yes. Uh, uh, GitHub.com slash Microsoft slash Terminal. And then so slash releases will get you to the releases page. Terminal. Okay, I'll put that in the show notes. That, that'll be useful. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, I, yeah, I've typed that URL so many times. <laughs> so. Uh, yep, uh, autocomplete helps as well. Sweet. Uh, very cool. This is um. Well, uh, if people uh, so they go to GitHub.com slash Microsoft Terminal, they can. Mm-hmm. Or I'm sorry, or they go to the first choice is go to the the store, the, yeah. the Microsoft Store, and if mm-hmm. it's not there, go to GitHub, and uh, they get it installed. And uh, if they want to learn more, what's the best place to learn? So I would recommend going to the doc site that we published a build as well, and you can get there at aka.ms slash Terminal dash docs. That's their a little alias because the longer link is longer. Um, but we have all of the settings documented. We also have a like get started page and some tips and tricks on there and a troubleshooting page. Tons of good stuff on there and so also some tutorials if you want to like change how your tab title is set or set up power line. That's all on there. Um, and then that is also on GitHub. That whole docs thing is on GitHub as well. So if you want to see a page or don't know how to do something and think it should be documented, you can also head to that GitHub repo. I think you can navigate to it from the doc site, but that's also helpful because we've been getting contributions on there too. Um, but if you don't know anything about Terminal, definitely head to the doc site because it's got a, okay. like a ton of stuff. Yeah, I'm looking at them both right now. They look pretty Sweet. thorough here. Sweet. Uh, yeah, uh, and in the uh, I I saw you on the, the the build keynote, and you talked about Windows Terminal, and you I know this isn't actually your product, but you also mm-hmm. talked a little bit about WSL. Can you yes. tell me what that is? Yeah, so WSL is Windows subsystem for Linux, and it is the subsystem inside of Windows that lets you run any Linux binary. And the way that we're doing it now is we're shipping a full Linux kernel inside Windows. And the latest update came in 2004 where WSL2 became widely available. And that has, it removed, so the way that uh, WSL had it before, there was a translation layer. So the communication between uh, Linux files was a little bit slower. Like, so if you're in the Linux environment, it had to go through a few more layers. So with WSL2, we took out that layer because we put in a full kernel. And it's so much faster if you do stuff like sudo apt install, sudo apt update, anything Linuxy is extremely faster in WSL2. And then it also added stuff for, um, oh, I'm trying to think of what it was. Improved file system performance. Oh, and um, full system call compatibility was the other one. So since it's a full Linux kernel, you can run anything that's Linux, including stuff like Docker, which wasn't previously supported. So it added a ton more stuff because it's literally Linux in Windows. So that's that's WSL. Um, I don't own WSL. Craig Lowen does. So I'm his office mate. So I'm just trying to remember the things that he's told me or the presentations. You know a lot more done. than I do. <laughs> yeah. and our, we haven't been in the office since March, so I'm on my yeah. own. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, so that's what's new with WSL now. Um, and it's WSL 2 now. And I know in 2004, the recent announcement they also announced that that's, that's Windows Build 2004, correct? Windows. Yes. Build? Okay. Yes. 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 Um, sorry, I'm using my lingo. Um, Not the year 2004. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that's not confusing. Um, yeah. So they also just updated their install experience. So if you did it, typically before, you'd have to go through a bunch of steps to install WSL. Now they've changed it to WSL dash dash install. And then they also announced that they're supporting um, GUI applications. But that's coming in the future. That's like not now. Um, but mm-hmm. you'll be able to run Linux GUI apps on Windows, mm-hmm. which is crazy. And then I believe also in the latest update, um, GPU acceleration has been added, pretty sure. Um, so you can now, whenever you're running something in Linux, it's going to be using your GPU. So this is really helpful mm-hmm. for like machine learning or Absolutely. AI scenarios or like students who are learning and are running these types of things. It will use the GPU instead. So it won't 
like completely destroy your machine by using the CPU. So right. those were the updates that I know of. <laughs> okay, I'll be able to talk to Craig. And, uh, yeah, he would be great to talk to. Yeah. Excellent. Um, thank you for that. That's uh, that's all that was new today. Awesome. <laughs> uh, is there anything that we haven't talked about that we should? Um, we have a new font. Cascadia Code is our new font. Fonts. We also yes. we also own <laughs> that. <laughs> um, so I could talk about how that came to be and like where is that now and what's coming and stuff. We the, wanna... the fonts. Oh, well, you mean yeah. in terms of the process the, the, that your your team goes through for adding a new feature in general? Is that what you mean? Or like why we made a new font? Why it was phrase, named? Why is, that, is. why is that a big deal? That seems less relevant. Sure. To colors and. Is it a big deal? I'm missing something. Yeah. Well, so for us, when we look at Terminal, the thing that takes up most of the screen is the text window. So the yeah. font is the most important thing on the screen okay. because that's the thing you see the most. So when we were using Consolus or Consolus, um, it looked outdated. Like we had the new Terminal and then Consolus was in there and it still kind of felt like the old experience. So that's kind of why we wanted to get a new font going. So we huh. created Cascadia Code and previewed it at last build. And the name Cascadia Code comes from Cascadia, which is the code name of Terminal before it became Terminal. The insider Microsoft code name was oh, Cascadia. Code names are always way cooler than actual names, at least at Microsoft. <laughs> yeah, so we wanted to pay like homage to that. So yeah. we ma named the font on. after it. <laughs> yeah, and then um, code comes from the programming ligatures. So it has ligatures inside of it. So we use code that, to- What is a ligature? So if you're writing code or programming, if you have symbols that go together, like not equals is exclamation point equal sign, uh -huh. um, it will blend the two into a symbol so that it becomes the equal sign with a slash over it. So that's just oh. an example of one. So mm -hmm. like, it makes your code a little bit more readable. So that is in, we have those in Cascadia code, uh, but the terminal will ship with, or it does ship with Cascadia mono. So it doesn't have those because they're not technically accessible and we need to ship an accessible product. But you can have code as well because we ship code in the package too. So if you want ligatures, you can just change your font. Um, so that's Cascadia code. And stuff that's coming is we're adding font weights very soon. So you can get bold or you can get thin or anywhere in between because it's going to be a variable font. Okay. And we also added font weight support in terminal in 1.1. So that's out now in preview. So you can, once the new Cascadia code stuff comes out, you can already use it in terminal, which is kind of cool. So they're kind of going, being developed side by side. So. Okay, well, that does sound like something that would help accessibility. Right, yeah. So yeah, that's that's the font. That's why we made a font, that's the whole the whole deal, so. Well, excellent. Mm -hmm. All right, well, I really appreciate your time, Kayla. This, is, uh, this has been really educational for me and hopefully for those of you. Yeah, thanks awesome. for having me. Thank, thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. And you, uh, you stay safe, please. Thanks, you too. I'm so glad we became friends over talking about technology.